to carry on and plan the sequel. Because let's face it, baby, these days, you got to have a sequel. Yeah! Welcome back to Horror Queers. It's a special edition because, of course, it's the 10th anniversary of Scream 4, and we couldn't let it go by without acknowledging it. Consider and it a, a preview show. of coming events, Sydney. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever gets to quote Scream 4. It's really fun. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. in a lot of ways, I think this is still a bit of the bastard stepchild of the franchise. Like, people don't like three but then people feel like oh well four is just that one that came afterwards okay yeah so we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves so everyone we are not doing an episode on scream four right now (laughs) uh if you have been following the show for at least well a a couple months or so you know that we do do a scream film on basically our anniversary every year so every january so while we will be doing a full episode of scream four in january of next year uh we just thought we had to come in here and talk about for a little bit how much we love scream 4 because we do love scream 4 joe yes absolutely um and i think one of the things that we wanted to acknowledge is that i know in your case trace you have found a lot of comfort in scream 4 this year okay it's honestly not even me it's my husband like i swear to god he he's gone on this deep dive he's like us he actually thinks well maybe used to think scream 2 is the best entry in the franchise and he's been doing a deep dive into like because the thing with scream 4 is like you know it had a bunch of troubles during production there were a lot there's a lot of tampering by the wine scenes and it's a lot of cut footage alternate scenes blah 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 and he's been going on this deep dive of like fan edits of film of the film like putting together the lost the lost i mean the, the deleted footage and watching different versions that you know prove that editing makes a world of difference when you're watching a film <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's significant that, you know, during dark and troubled times, uh, it it's kind of fun and it warms my soul a little bit to know that you've been watching this movie a whole bunch. And it's something that I think a lot about, too, you know, particularly as we anticipate Scream 5 next year and how everybody's mm-hmm. hoping that Kirby comes back or hoping that Deputy Judy will come back with her lemon squares and so on. I love the taste of ass lemon squares, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, w- w- do you remember what you thought when you, because you saw Scream 4 in the theaters, right? You were one of the few people, I mean, few, it made like 37 million domestically, which was a huge drop off from the first three films. <sighs> I was so mad at that opening weekend number, but yes, I was there. Yeah. I was representing. I was so fucking excited because I legitimately didn't ever think we'd get another Scream film. Yeah. And that's how I was I, too. I was admittedly a little disappointed because I felt like something hadn't come together correctly. And it wasn't until later Mm. that I found out how much it had been tampered with. And I think that's really disappointing. That's so, okay. I mean, again, we're not going to go into like too much detail about this, but has your, have you warmed on it since? Like, have you watched it since? Yes, and I I particularly find the deleted scenes to be illuminating because it gives you a glimpse into what could have been had. Because you mentioned the wine scenes, but also the MPAA, of course, had their fingers into this. Oh, yeah. Again, is shocking to me. It's 2011. Like, let it fucking go. (laughs) But um, yeah, yeah, I've I've really come around to it. Yeah, I have too. And I think a lot of other people have too. You know, it's one of those things where in the past, I mean, again, we're on the 10th anniversary of this film. In the past three to five years, I've been seeing so many like, oh, Scream 4 is actually really good takes. And I'm like, well, there's not really an actually that needs to be put there. But sure, yeah. have at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean something that we knew all along? Fuckers. I mean, I, I, I was I was 22 when the first, sorry, when the first, when the fourth film came out. And it it's the first date that my husband and I like went on when we were officially a couple, you know, because when I was 22, we still use that terminology or we official yet. Um, I, I, I was at the midnight show and I knew something was up immediately when like the theater was maybe a quarter full. (laughs) Um, but we had a blast. I mean, I've, I have really liked this movie from the get go and it is definitely one that I've kind of like grown to like and love more and more on each subsequent viewing. And like most of the films in the franchise, it's a bit ahead of its time in the subjects that it's tackling. Oh yeah. I I vividly remember people critiquing the film for 
kind of the way that we talk about Scream 3 and the voice modification technology where people saying like, oh, the idea that people would film murders is just ridiculous. I can't believe that this film would try to make us believe. And then it's like, Err. yeah, no, it's it, it's oddly prescient. And I, I, I'm expecting the same kind of reaction to Scream 5, like whatever it's going to do. Like, I'm sure people are going to be like, well, that's not really realistic. And it's like, well, you know what? There are four films prior to this that show... <laughs> That it can predict the future. That's what this franchise does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will say, I know a lot of people have gravitated to like Jill Roberts as the ultimate villain. Like people talk about Stu's mom in number two, and then they talk about Jill Roberts as like another really iconic villain in the franchise. But mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's really easy to dismiss a lot of the other things that are working well in this film. And I do want to give a shout out that my mind was blown with the opening. Because I, you know, you go in thinking, oh, they're going to kill one of the original three. And then it just introduces yeah. this bevy of stars. Because I remember when the film was shooting, they cat like they listed the, the cast. And I thought, oh my God, they're, you know, they've got Anna Paquin, they've got Kristen Bell, they've got Amy What's Her Face <laughs> from uh <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. And yeah. you just think like, oh, how are they going to appear? And then all of these actresses appear in that first, what, like five to 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I actually would love, like, I know we're not doing like Scream 5 prediction, but I would actually love it if like the Amy, not Amy T. Garden, because she's dead. Um, But like, okay, like Lucy Hale from Scream 4, but like whatever actress she's playing, be it herself or like, jane doe actress appears in scream five and it's like oh my god you're the actress from stab seven or stab six or whatever (laughs) which one was the one in space you know the opening it's really really good i do prefer the alternate opening because it's actually like really disturbing the only issue is it was switched out because there wasn't a phone call in it and they were like well we gotta do a phone call so they did reshoots and it's just little things like that. I mean, one of the things that always stands out to me about Scream 4 that most people don't like, and I don't even think it's good per se, is Jill's mom, who's like this kind of kooky, like she has that line that's like, I have scars too. Nobody asked about my scars. But there's deleted footage where it's like after Olivia's death, she walks out and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just took a bunch of pills and I was drinking wine. So it's made clear in a deleted scene that she has a lot of issues with booze and pills. But as it stands in the film, it's just like she's just this kooky character that makes no fucking sense with everything else that's going on. Oh, yeah. And I love that actress. It's still pandemic time. So I'm completely spacing on her actual name. But I'm like, oh, it's the president. It's President Roslyn from Battlestar Galactica. Right. And she's amazing but then in this movie you think oh well that's not a very memorable role like it's not very good Mm -hmm. and it's yeah she shows up a bunch in some of those deleted scenes and you realize oh there's a bunch more to this character and a bunch more to a bunch of other characters in the film too and just for pacing issues for gore issues this movie really did get hacked to ribbons I mean, and it's interesting because I think it's the shortest film in the franchise. Again, I don't have it in front of my face, but I think it's about hour 45. And there is a good 15 minutes of deleted scenes you can add back into this movie. And I'm a little surprised they didn't, considering that Scream 2 is a full two hours long. So Mm -hmm. it does feel like a missed opportunity. I would love to see, like again, like an official recut footage, like film. But unfortunately, because Wes Craven has passed, I don't think we're ever going to get something like that. No, no. And I think what we're left with is things like fan edits, like what Ari has discovered. Mm -hmm. So I do think as we move closer to our full length episode on Scream Mm -hmm. 4, that's actually one of the things I'm going to be checking out is seeing how the film could have looked based on what people have been able to glean from those deleted pieces, uh, just to see if it makes the film more whole. No, I mean, I I think it's, I'm not, I'm not someone who cares or gives a shit about fan edits, to be honest. And I wouldn't have watched this if my husband had been like, I found this fan edit, it's really good, let's watch it together. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Um, (laughs) It's worth watching. I mean, again, they're worth seeking out. Some of them are gems, some of them are not. Um, But it's, it's just nice to see such a, because you don't see this with the other films, right? Like you see people like, everyone has their favorite Scream film, everyone loves especially in the queer community. Everyone loves this franchise, but I feel like four is now the one that's just getting talked about so much. And I don't know if it's because it came out for a new generation. I, 
as much as we dislike the TV show, I do think that we have that show to thank for a new generation of fans who probably got into the film series later. Um, and it's, I don't know. I just, I'm just fascinated by this new discourse around Scream 4, which I, at the time of its release, thought it was doomed to just be a forgotten sequel. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting to see if the chatter kind of continues as we head into Scream 5 and people realize, oh, I've got to do my marathon rewatch before the new film because we don't know how this film is going to feed into the events of the new film. Like, we can safely predict that her trio, because we know that they're coming back, you know, obviously their narrative journey throughout 4 is going to be feeding into whatever happens in five, but we don't know if there's going to be more to it than that. Like, will the killers be referencing Jill Roberts? Will her viral uh, celebrity oh that ends the film, will that come <laughs> back into play in some way? We don't know. So it's really exciting to think that Scream 4 that, is actually going to be a big piece of the conversation. That's something too. I've always like Jill's self-mutilation scene at the end of Scream 4 is something that I always feel like it's a lot of, of laughs. Like people are like, oh, it's just really unintentionally funny. And I always found that really interesting because I find it genuinely upsetting if in- inherently watchable because it's just like, oh my God, like this is a person who has cracked and is mutilating themselves for the sake of fame. And while it's funny to see her run fa- like into that picture frame and like, flop down to the ground it's also like really upsetting and i i kind of it bugs me that it has that legacy but again i think people are just coming around to it now so i i hope that with this anniversary um people give it a second or third or fourth or tenth look and obviously check out our full-length episode in what eight months <laughs> Oh nine gosh. months <laughs> who could tell yeah <laughs> well with that said that seems like a great place to wrap up this special mini sewed edition but uh folks we'd love to hear from you what are your favorite parts or scenes or characters from screen four and how do you think it'll fit into the upcoming film agreed let us know and uh Oh, I was I should have had, I should have had a quote. I don't need friends. I need fans, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, let's cross out this mini sode and leave it at that. Yeah.